on the morning of December 2nd, 1859, in Charlestown, Virginia, John Brown stepped up into the back of a horse-drawn wagon and took a seat on top of his own coffin. In the distance, he could see the silhouette of the gallows and the more than one thousand soldiers standing on duty. John Brown was ready to face his death. The story of John Brown is controversial in American history. Viewed by some as a hero and visionary, and others as a madman and a terrorist. Born on May 9, 1800 in Connecticut, and then moving to Ohio, Brown would grow up under an influence of anti-slavery activities and debate. His father had organized a safe house for slaves, fleeing from the south through the Underground Railroad. It was this influence along with his strict religious devotion, which would shape Brown's anti-slavery philosophy. For Brown, he could not justify the enslavement, brutality, and murder of other human beings, even if the law allowed it. Unlike many anti-slavery activists of the time, Brown believed in violent extremism, in revolutionary actions against slaveholders and government officials. Brown committed himself to the anti-slavery movement when Elijah Lovejoy, who established an anti-slavery newspaper, was brutally murdered by a pro-slavery mob. After Lovejoy's death, Brown famously declared, Here, before God, in the presence of these witnesses, from this time I consecrate my life to the destruction of slavery. At age 16, Brown left his family home to attend college in Massachusetts and became an ordained minister. By 1819, he returned home to Connecticut to open his own tannery business. It was at this time he married and started a family. Brown's business ventures initially were very successful. However, by the 1830s, his company suffered, which was made worse by the economic crisis of 1839. Tragically, his wife and two children died to illness around the same time. Brown remarried in 1833 and would have 13 children with his new wife, Mary Ann. He moved to Springfield, Massachusetts, hoping to reverse his fortunes and with a new business partner found success. It was during this time that Brown became aware of just how ruthless the wealthy class of businessmen can be in their pursuit of profit. Through this interaction, Brown would become radical in his philosophy. By 1850, Brown moved his family again to a rural farming community in the state of New York and purchased a farm near Lake Placid, where he helped members of the black community. By 1855, two of his sons started their own farms in the state of Kansas. Hoping that he could contribute in making Kansas a free state for black people, he moved to assist his sons in the cause. Brown's first anti-slavery raid occurred in 1856, when pro-slavery supporters attacked in Lawrence, Kansas. Brown, including his sons and other supporters, staged a counterattack, resulting in the brutal killing of five pro-slavery settlers. Brown and his men removed the settlers from their homes and hacked them to death with swords. This event would be known as Bleeding Kansas. Over the next several years, Brown would continue with his raids, resulting in the capture of two of his sons and the death of a third one. 
when the population of Kansas voted to be a free state in 1858, the residents voted in favor for slavery to be legal. This was the last straw for Brown. He set out to conduct his most ambitious raid yet. Recruiting 22 men and receiving military training, the operation began on October 16, 1859, with the objective to capture Colonel Lewis Washington, a relative of George Washington, who continued to practice slavery. The raid was successful in the kidnapping of Washington. The men attempted to seize an armory in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, before government officials in Washington would be informed and soldiers sent in. Brown's small group of resistance was able to capture a few local slave owners and the armory, resulting in the killing of four people and wounding nine. However, the local people of the town started to fight back, and by the morning of the 17th, they had created their own armed militia. The militia was able to surround the armory and free the men Brown had captured. The next day, President James Buchanan ordered a company of Marines to attack the armory, taking the wounded Brown and his men alive. Brown was arrested, and in November a jury found him guilty after only 45 minutes of deliberation on charges of conspiracy, murder, and treason. Brown was sentenced to death by public hanging on December 2nd, 1859. Brown's last words were the following, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood. A little over a year later would mark the beginning of the Civil War, America's bloodiest conflict. How do you view John Brown? Was he a hero or a terrorist?